two senses that are really important for our survival are our sense of pain and our sense of temperature. Of course, these have more scientific terms, so pain is known as nociception, and temperature is known as thermoception. We're able to sense pain and temperature through receptors that are located throughout our entire body. So let's look at a hand, for example. This hand happens to have four fingers, but that's okay. So we have pain and temperature receptors throughout our entire hand. Interestingly enough, there are a few different types of temperature receptors, and one of the most common types of temperature receptors is a receptor known as TRIP-V1. And this TRIP-V1 receptor is not only sensitive to temperature, but it's also sensitive to pain. So what I'm drawing here are these TRIP-V1 receptors, and they're spread out throughout the entire hand. I'm just going to draw a few. These receptors send axons that eventually become one giant nerve. So what exactly is a receptor? Is a receptor a nerve? Is it a type of cell? So in fact, a receptor is actually a specialized type of nerve. It's the first nerve in this entire pathway that eventually reaches the brain. And it's specialized in that it actually has little sites, binding sites, for various molecules that can cause it to activate. It also undergoes a conformational change or a change in shape whenever there's a change in temperature. So it's basically a specialized nerve. It sends axons to this big giant nerve that eventually leaves the arm and goes to the brain. And this nerve actually can be split up into three main types of fibers. There are some fibers that are really big, so they have a large diameter. There are other fibers that have a medium diameter, and there are still other fibers that have a very small diameter. These big fibers are known as A beta fibers. These medium fibers are known as A gamma fibers, and these tiny little fibers are known as C fibers. So apart from their size, there's also one big difference that distinguishes the different fibers, and that is the presence of myelin. So the large A beta fibers have a whole lot of myelin on them. The A gamma fibers have a little bit of myelin on them, and the C fibers have no myelin on them. So the combination of myelin and the size of the fiber actually changes how quickly each fiber can send an action potential. So when this receptor is activated, it sends a signal, and depending on which type of fiber conducts the signal to the brain, the signal will reach the brain at different times. So the A beta fibers have the highest conduction velocity, so they're very fast. The A gamma fibers are a little bit slower, so they're medium speed, and the C fibers are very slow. So why is it that these A beta fibers are faster than the C fibers? And that's because they have a really large diameter. And when an axon has a very large diameter, it actually decreases the resistance within the axon. So as a neural impulse is traveling through the axon, if there's a lot of resistance, the signal actually travels fairly slow. But if there's really little resistance, the signal can travel pretty quickly. So that's why a larger diameter is important, because it decreases the resistance within the fiber. Myelin is also very important because it actually increases the conductance of the fiber. There are a whole bunch of ions sprinkled throughout the axon. These ions flow in and out of the cell in order to generate the action potential. And so these ions are actually unable to go in and out of the cell, except through some areas that are unmyelinated. This actually causes the cell to propagate an action potential very quickly. C fibers are unmyelinated, and so the electrical impulse is actually very slow to travel through this type of fiber. So how does pain arise? So let's imagine that we get poked by some sharp object. What happens is as this object is entering the skin, it actually causes cells to break open. And when the cells break open, they release a whole bunch of little chemicals. And these little chemicals will diffuse to the nearest pain receptor, so the nearest TRIP-V1 receptor, and it will actually activate the receptor. So if we were to blow this receptor up, if we kind of draw it a little bit bigger, it looks a little something like this, and there's a little area for, a, for chemicals to bind. So when a cell breaks open, it releases chemicals, and this chemical will come in and it will bind. And when this molecule binds, it will cause the receptor to fire an action potential. And this action potential will eventually reach the brain through one of these fibers. Interestingly enough, nature has actually evolved its own chemical that can also activate this TRIP-V1 receptor. So if you've ever eaten a jalapeno or any other type of really spicy pepper, you know that it's very spicy and sometimes it can cause you to feel a little bit of pain. When you bite into a jalapeno, you're breaking open the cells that, can, that make up the jalapeno, and these cells actually contain a molecule known as capsaicin. 
So when you bite into this jalapeno, the capsaicin will exit the jalapeno and will actually bind to TRPV1 receptors in your tongue. So this molecule will go over here and it will bind right over here. So now, when the capsaicin binds, it causes this TRPV1 receptor to fire an action potential, which reaches your brain, and your brain will interpret that as pain and will also interpret that as heat. In fact, if you were to eat a whole bunch of jalapenos over time, this receptor would not would stop firing. It would become desensitized to the capsaicin. And if you kept eating jalapenos past the point where this receptor was desensitized, this receptor can actually die. So this nerve can actually die off. And doctors use this in the clinic. So if somebody has arthritis and it's a very painful arthritis in their knee, they can actually inject high levels of capsaicin. And this high level of capsaicin will actually go in and kill off these nerve fibers, these pain receptors that are causing the person to experience pain at the site of the knee due to the arthritis.